Have you ever sat down to study a math book, looked at the theorems, lemmas, corollaries, and could not help but ask yourself, why is this particular result so important? It looks so random. What was the original motivation for the mathematicians who found this result? There is probably a good reason for its existence, but why isn't this reason obvious? The missing ingredient is simple, intuition. Intuition in mathematics is something like having a compass. It's not a replacement for technique and rigor, which are more equivalent to a complicated advanced GPS system that will get you out from anywhere. But you won't have the slightest idea of what the symbols on the GPS mean. So you have to start with a compass, with intuition, which gives you the right sense of direction that you need to be taking. Or in other words, it gives you the reason of why you are seeing the math that is presented to you. And that makes everything easier. Learning the subject becomes easier, memorizing the results becomes easier, and even developing creativity on how to prove the theorems becomes easier. A person once commented something in one of our YouTube videos, something that really stuck with me, that abstraction needs motivation. Mathematicians don't randomly set up axioms and start working out theorems. Every axiomatic system has a history, had a motivation. First, mathematicians come up with a picture on how parts of some problem fit together, with a clear intuitive idea in mind. They don't just spew well-worded theorems out of thin air. They come to a more rigorous idea through intuitive thinking. So, let me ask you this. Can you describe an entire field of mathematics using only one sentence? This is probably impossible, or at least this sentence will be incomplete. But if you go ahead and try it, your mind will naturally think about the essence or the core of the subject. Of course, in trying to come up with one single sentence, we would have to forget about a lot, and I mean a lot of details. But this exercise does help you to develop an intuition about the subject. For example, let me try and define dynamical systems. Dynamical systems is a mathematical field which is mainly concerned with studying how things evolve over time, often through iteration, using differential equations. Obviously, I failed to mention many other things. The dynamical systems also happen to be the study of patterns of motion, like stability, chaos, periodicity, attractors, bifurcations, among other things. But the sentence does capture the core of dynamical systems. Now, what about abstract algebra? Abstract algebra is a branch of mathematics which primarily studies structures, symmetries, and operations, and how they behave when abstracted from numbers. Again, I've missed things like homomorphisms, isomorphisms, fields, rings, etc. But you can get the main idea that I'm trying to portray here. Now, topology. Topology is a field of mathematics which is mainly concerned with the properties of space that remain unchanged under continuous deformations, bending, stretching, twisting, but never tearing. These definitions are not perfect at all, I know that. And I'm pretty sure that if you ask 10 different mathematicians to define all these subjects in one sentence, you would get 10 similar but different sentences. It just shows how our brains grasp the totality of a subject, giving different weights to different features of each. So, for example, are there connections between topology and algebra? Absolutely. But does that mean that algebraists think just like topologists? Not really. They tend to think very differently, their motives are different, their questions and interests are different. And that's the key. Every subject, every field of mathematics is guided by some deep motive. If you're just memorizing theorems, you're completely missing the point. You need to be able to look at a theorem and ask why. Why is it there? Why was it worth proving? What's the problem that it's trying to solve? Let's see an illustration of this concept. Okay, Sophia, really, I need to take a break, man. It's hurting. I I'm sitting all day. But you can continue working while standing. What do you mean? Most of our day is spent sitting. And it's a very uncomfortable feeling to have to constantly switch your position because you just keep on slouching or because your bottom can't handle it anymore. But thankfully, all of this goes away with the FlexiSpot Dusk. Right here is the E7 Pro model. With it, you don't have to worry about spilling your drink on your computer because these desks are built to withstand any imbalance you throw at them. They hold up to 355 pounds or 125 kilos of weight which is perfect for any heavy equipment you might need to place on it. Wherever you place them, 
the FlexSpot desk will stay solid, even at its highest level. You can customize the desk to your liking, the size, color, material, and additional accessories. Not to mention that they have a huge selection of other products or desks that you can check out. We've honestly been thinking about buying a desk just like that for months now. Because, let's face it, it's really uncomfortable to sit all day long. This E7 Pro desk is a lifesaver, because it not only lets us work more comfortably by adjusting its levels, but even comes with USB ports and an advanced keypad. Plus, the E7 desk comes with up to 15 years warranty. That's how confident they are that you'll love this desk. Check out FlexiSpot's website if you want a premium standing desk. And you can check out their E7 Pro model if you want a desk that's more stable and that can handle more heavy equipment. Plus, you can use a code to get a discount. Now let's get back to the video. We'll open up the book Complex Analysis by Lars Alfors and go to page 113. There we find theorem 4, in other words, Cauchy's theorem, which says, if f of z is analytic in an open disk delta, then the integral of f of z over every closed curve gamma in the region delta must be zero. Very quickly, how can we interpret that? The domain is a copy of the complex plane. The codomain is another copy of the complex plane. And f is the function between them, which maps points z in the domain to points f of z in the codomain. Pick a disk and call it delta. Then pick any closed curve gamma inside of it. If we map this curve using the function f, we get another curve f of gamma. Now we integrate it over gamma, and the result must be zero. Drawing a graph like it is usually done in real analysis would require a four-dimensional space, the Cartesian product of the complex numbers with themselves. It is impossible to draw it. The theorem says that if a function is analytic in an open neighborhood delta, then integrating it along any closed curve gamma in delta results in zero. So the infinitesimal contributions perfectly cancel. Okay, there's a lot to unpack here like the definition of an analytic function, how exactly these quantities perfectly add up to zero, or maybe we could even see a concrete example and so on. But the point I'm trying to make here is another one. You need to look for the motive. Always look for the motive. The motive here is to simplify something that is already very complex, literally complex in both senses here. Just think about it, we can't even draw the graph of the function because it would require four dimensions. Imagine trying to visualize the integration process of this function, for example. It's even harder. However, when we realize that in many cases these integrals just vanish, as long as the theorem's conditions are met, of course, we begin to appreciate how powerful this result is. It saves us a lot of unnecessary calculations since the final result is zero anyway. If you're enjoying this video and you want to support us, please do not forget to like the video and to subscribe to the channel. For example, for f of z equals z squared, where z is a complex number, what is the integral of this function over this path gamma? All we need is to calculate the simple, trivial integral. Are you guys ready to do it? Because I am not. So I'm just going to do what most books do. The details are left as an exercise for the reader. Thankfully, there is Cauchy to save us. And we can simply say that this result is zero. Cauchy's theorem is actually the foundation of many other deep results in complex analysis, like Cauchy's integral formula, which says that you can recover the value of a function at a point using its value on a surrounding curve. Cauchy's theorem is also the foundation of Morera's theorem, the identity theorem, Liouville's theorem, and many other results in complex analysis. And by the way, that's just in pure mathematics. There are also many applications in physics. Check out the PDF link in the description for more. And also, if you would like to be notified when we release our books and courses, please sign up with your email address on our website, link in the description. The point is, every lemma, every corollary, and every definition we encounter is part of an idea some mathematician had decades ago, or even centuries ago. And you are now part of understanding why these particular mathematicians thought of that. Why did they come to this conclusion? And that means always looking for the motive. 
You can memorize every single proof in a textbook and still fail to understand the subject. But if you capture the intent behind the math and the questions that it's built to answer, then even the most abstract theories will start to become intuitive for you. And intuition isn't something you are born with. It's something you develop when you stretch your brain and force it to dive deep into the motive behind a subject or behind a particular result. Try to look for the motive the next time you bump into a result in mathematics and you'll see how this is going to help your learning process. So in conclusion, how do you build mathematical intuition? Look for the motive every time you read a math result. You can discuss it with friends, look for Reddit posts, use forums, mathematics stack exchange, math overflow, use AI, look up YouTube videos. There are literally so many ways to find the motive behind math results nowadays. And don't forget to check out the E7 Pro Desk. Link in the description. If you guys enjoyed this video, I'm pretty sure you're gonna love this one. See you guys there.